Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a ZBrush tutorial, but not just any ZBrush. This is actually ZBrush Core. So ZBrush Core is a watered down version of the regular ZBrush, but it has a lot of powerful tools, which I'm going to be demonstrating. And it's also significantly cheaper. So hopefully you guys will consider ZBrush Core as an option. That being said, if you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Tutorials include Maya, Substance Painter, and ZBrush. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software, and let's go ahead and get started. Because in this ZBrush tutorial, we are going to be creating armor. So uh, what I'm going to do now is actually bring in a character. So I'm going to bring in a female character because I'm going to create a female armor set. And I'm not saving that. So uh, isn't that cool that they actually give credit to, to people? And what I want to do is create an armor for this uh, particular uh, character. Now, I don't want to change her body, right? I want to just extract something so that I can actually use it as an armor. What we're going to do is actually mask uh, the armor, right? So the armor is going to be across here. I'm just going to do the front in this for this example. And I'm just gonna go in and just mask this area. Anything that I don't want, you know, you can always unmask. So for example, I think it appears a little tight. So maybe something like that. All right, I'm going to tighten the uh, mask by holding down control alt a couple of times. We are going to do similar to what we did before, which was extract. So once again, we have a thickness of 0.2. So if you click on extract, it's actually going to show you how thick the armor is going to be. If I rotate it, it disappears. So let's go ahead and click on extract again. And you'll see that that's actually a pretty thick piece of armor. Uh, maybe I don't want it that thick. So you might want to just change this to maybe a 0.01 and extract again. So if you're happier with that, you can click accept. So that's going to give us a the female armor. I'm going to hide this character and I'm going to unmask this one. So it still is, you know, just got the figure of a female body, but we're going to go ahead and press S to kind of smooth it out. Um, make sure I have it selected. And if that's not working, then just grab the chin dynamic and start flattening out the armor. Now I am going to be pushing this forward. So, you know, don't worry, <laughs> there is going to be room for her. Um, but this is just going to help reduce the curvature of the armor. And it also already starts making it look more like banged up armor. All right, it's already starting to look like armor. Let's bring her back. Uh, let's unmask her and make sure that both of them are revealed, right? So you can see that her armor is ex like very much pressed against her. So let me move her armor forward. And then what I can do is also use the move tool. So grab the move tool, get a big brush and just kind of push it forward until it covers her body, the anatomy. So fairly quickly, we can, I'm trying to. Move this around so it's a little more. Armor like. There we go. So at least it covers her anatomy. So at least now I know that this is going to uh, fit her. So if you don't want the pivot point. Um, 
you know, on her pelvis, you can always unlock the pivot point here and then just drag it up. Weep. And then now the pivot point will be right there in the center where you placed it. So that's a nice way of moving your pivot point. All right, cool. First, I want to kind of start off with the edges. So if you hold down control and you see how I have this brush, there's actually different types of brushes out there for masking. So right now, if I click here, you can see that I can grab, uh, it's a stroke, right? But if I grab the brush, I can actually get a circle, right? So if I click and drag, bink, I will get a circle. If I click and, dr click and drag and then hold down space, this is literally the craziest thing in ZBrush. If I, if I hold down control, which is masking, and then I have this circle and I click and drag and hold down space, I'll be able to move the, the place and stick it wherever I want, right? So again, this is using holding down control. I have circles, I have mass lasso, which means that I can actually drag this little piece here and it will mask it for me, right? So I can create some interesting designs that way. I have the pen, which is the one we're comfortable with, which is just painting. <laughs> Yes, just like Photoshop, all sorts of buttons you can hold, press, and eventually all, all 10 fingers are doing something. Uh, you can mask the perfect circle, so I can get a perfect circle. Pink. Again, if you hold down the space bar, I'll be able to move it around, and I get a perfect circle. So I don't have to try to use this one, which is a circle, and then I can get ellipses. Um, I can get an actual perfect circle. Here's a rectangle, right? And again, I can drag it. Um, and, and then you have the mesh balloon, which is, you know, the one I just showed you. So, um, yep. So I'm going to go back to my, actually the mass lasso might be, maybe a good one for this case. So what I could do is just kind of drag around the edges of what I'm trying to do is just get the sleeves and I can get a really nice organic cut with it. So I can just kind of drag this along the collar and try to get oops, a design. So I'm gonna go through here and just kind of draw the edge of it. And now I have a mask around here and I'm gonna mask this area here. That wasn't the best mask I've ever made. There we go. And just like anything else, you can also use the alt to get you a, you can actually, uh, re reduce, oh boy, uh, subtract the mask, right? So you can actually go in and subtract it. So it's a little bit more, I guess, organic if you want to do it that method. All right, so I am going to reverse this, pink. And then I am going to go to my deformation. And I can either use inflate balloon, which will inflate that just a little bit if I want to, or I can always just use regular inflate. So again, I'm just trying to create like a little bit of a indentation on my armor. And if you want to create this into a polygroup, then I would recommend that you do. There we go, control W, and that will get you the polygroup. So if you need to go back and design it, you can by just holding down control, click, control, shift, click, control, shift, click again, and it will get you different type of um, the armor. So the nice thing about that is, let me take a look at my active points. I don't have many active points, so let's go ahead and divide. So now I have that. And I can start designing, let's say I wanna design here. So I'd, again, hold down control, shift, click. It will focus just on that, and then I can design it. Now, what I saw some of you guys do is actually grab the Dan standard and try to draw it yourself, right? So you're trying to do your designs, which is fine. I'm gonna hide a lady. All right, so my active points right now, it's 489. I'm going to divide. I'm at one point, whew, getting really high, almost 2 million. So just keep an eye on that poly count. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and start doing more decorations by using masks. If you just look up alpha maps and things like that, floral designs online, you can actually get a few interesting designs as well. And we have a couple of designs here for you guys. We have this. We have a couple of floral designs, a lion head. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate a couple of cool things about this and also some warnings. So alphas are just like anything else. Um, as long as, 
anything white will rise. Anything black is basically doesn't exist. And anything gray will basically will, will rise and fall depending on the gradient. So we're going to go up here to the top. I'm going to go to alpha. I'm going to import. And let's start off with um, floral one. So it's a PSD. So this PSD has this type of design. And I am going to grab just a regular standard brush, grab the alpha here. And you can just, I'm going to turn off symmetry, and then you can just try to dry it, right? So you can use a rectangle, and then you can actually design it. Now, you'll notice that we're getting this little line on it. A, we can get the design really quickly because somebody else did it for us. Um, but it also comes with this little line. So that's one of the key reasons why you have to make sure you get the right one because you're gonna have to kind of paint this out, right? But really quickly, we can get a really cool looking design. So again, I can go into my alphas, go to import, and I can bring another floral design, which I have already active. And let me check symmetries on, and then you can just go ahead and either hold on Alt to make it stick in, or without holding out Alt, you can make it like this. Now, if you want, you can increase your density, your intensity, Z intensity, to make them stand out even further. But again, fairly quickly, you can get this really nice decorative armor. It feels a little bit like cheating, but it works. <laughs> uh, here's another floral design. You can see that that one's too strong. So I'm gonna reduce my Z intensity. Here's the warning. Uh, there's this really cool looking line, right? Let me go ahead and hit X. So I'm gonna put the line in the head and you're gonna see that we're getting some really weird strips on the side. And the reason why it's because the lion has writing on it and it has white strips on the side. So if you guys wanna use this lion head, you need to make sure you take it into Photoshop and clean it up. This is a quick example. Let me just jump into Photoshop. Okay, so make your selection. And in this case, I am going to select the words, all of the white borders, and then I am going to be filling it with black, right? The lion is white. And then I'm gonna save as and call it like version two, just so we can compare the difference. Okay, here's my lion two. I'm gonna increase my intensity and there you go. I now have a line. Now you'll notice that the quality is kind of pixely, right? So again, the quality, the this line isn't very big. This is actually 100% of its size. And the image size is 564, which is like the size of a stamp. So that if you want a high quality line, you're gonna have to go in and find a better quality. But in this case, this would be really good for something small like here. Uh, let me go ahead and right. So if it's small, you won't even notice that the quality of the lion is not great, right? If you zoom in, it's okay. But from afar, it does, it looks, you know, actually it looks kind of strange in this side. It's not the best place for it. But the point is, is that you want to make sure that if you don't have a high quality uh, image, then you have to make sure that it's a small decoration, not a high, not a large decoration. And then you might want to go in and just soften the edges. I'm holding down shift and just soften the edges. All right, so very quickly, we're getting some really cool designs. Let's bring in our own mask, All right? So we can, in fact, import our own mask. For example, let's say that I'm a really great artist and I can draw these really cool Celtic designs. However, um, masking isn't so hot. <laughs> My masking isn't great. So what can I do? And if I try to use this, I mean, it's a good start, but I'm not, you know, exactly thrilled about it. What we're going to do is hold on control and we have an alpha. So let's grab the Celtic knot. And with the alpha, again, I'm holding down control. I can change it to drag rectangle and I can click and drag. And you'll see that it's kind of soft on the edges, right? My mask is soft on the edges. That's because of the focal shift. I'm going to undo that. If I shift my focal shift all the way to negative 100, I'm going to increase my draw size. Um, I get a much sharper uh, design. 
which is great because that's what I want. So now that we have this, I can reverse it and I can start using the methods that I've been using before, which is I can start doing the damn standard. Sorry, not the damn standard. Um, the clay buildup. Make my brush smaller because this is huge. And just going in and start designing. Or actually, it might be actually better for me to inflate. That's what I should have done first. So let me just inflate a little bit. Oh boy. Uh, let's do inflate balloon. That might be a little better. Just a little bit, not too much. What I love about this deformation, oh my gosh, uh, deformation thing is that you can do, it feels like you're modeling, even though you're actually not modeling anything, it's like free modeling. It's kind of nice. Uh, let me get my damn standard. Oop, I have this on, so let me turn that alpha off, and then you can start designing your own design. Mm, let's go to stroke. Let's go to lazy mouse, and I'm going to increase my lazy mouse radius so that I can get a little bit more of a drag. There we go. So that gives me a little bit more control instead of just kind of drawing it over and over. So then I have, there we go. That makes things a little bit easier for me to kind of get a better design. It's very relaxing for me. Whee. So you can create your own designs using that. You can use someone else's alphas. Yeah, that's kind of like what I wanted to show you guys today is just different types of ways you guys can create decoration. Okay, everybody, that is basically how you can start your armor in ZBrush and how to add details using masks as well as alphas. In the next video tutorial, we're gonna continue with the details. We're gonna start adding some chain link, and I'm also going to show you how to texture it and render it in ZBrush Core. So thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited that you spent the time with me. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. And also share if you feel that somebody could use this to help them be create better armor, please share my videos. That would be amazing. Also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free downloads, free eBooks, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And while you're there, take a look at my e-courses. If you want to support me a little bit more, please purchase an e-course. It is a, they are a deep dive into Maya's modeling, texturing, lighting, and so much more. So I would really appreciate your support if you purchased a course or two. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time when we complete modeling the armor and texture it in ZBrush Core.